Welcome, I'm Allison Douglas, a DNP student at Jacksonville State University, and this is my Extreme Makeover presentation. As an introduction, the purpose of this presentation is to shed light on the significance and importance of good communication within a multidisciplinary team. My first job as a new nurse was, was with a great organization that allowed me to grow and learn in my skills and competence. I loved being an employee there as I agreed with the organization's mission, vision, and values as they aligned with my personal goals as a nurse. In order to achieve the organizational mission, vision, and values, team members were to perform these seven promises to, to the patients, visitors, and fellow coworkers. Have positive attitudes, give respect, take ownership, be mindful, practice inclusiveness, use superior communication, and exceed expectations. After this presentation, the learner should be able to describe a time of miscommunication, identify influencing variables, explain how the themes relate to the culture, relate the concepts to pattern changes for innovation, and rewrite the story using concepts learned. Let's recount a story of, of miscommunication during my time as an ICU nurse. On day one, a bedside trach was performed on patient X after he exceeded the recommendation of ventilation days by ET tube. His lab values revealed coagulopathies, putting him at high risk for DIC. The plan prior to trach was repleting him by infusing platelets, FFP, and fibr fibrinogen. The consulted surgical critical care team placed the trach prior to blood product administration, despite nurse efforts to postpone. Post-procedure, I noticed severe oozing to the distal trach site, and despite my efforts of hemostasis, contacted the surgical resident and attending Dr. S. Surgicel gauze was ordered to achieve hemostasis. Midday, during the patient's dialysis treatment, the dialysis nurse also noted the severity of bleeding and contacted the surgical team. The resident rounded again, ordered continuation of surgicel gauze along with surgifoam to aid in clotting. After bleeding steadily all shift, bedside report was given to night shift nurse T with the same interventions ordered from the night shift team when she had called. I returned on the second day and an overnight pan of saved blood soaked gauze was shown to me in bedside report. Feeling worried, I brought the patient case to the attention of my nurse manager. Her and I sent an email to Dr. C, the surgical team department head, about our extreme concern for patient X's safety. Substantial bleeding continued throughout my second shift with multiple calls to both the medical and surgical teams. The medical team suggested to upsize the trach and try to tamponade the bleeding, an idea that did not appear to be taken into consideration. The same surgical resident attempted to control the bleeding that second day with combat gauze as yesterday's interventions were not working. Frustrated before the resident left, he yelled, at, he yelled at and lectured the nursing staff not to page him again over the issue. Shift report was updated to the same returning nurse T that all the physicians were aware of the issue, the proper chain of command had been notified, and I had documented thoroughly. When I returned on day three, I was not surprised that the bleeding had continued overnight, except this time patient X had reportedly desaturated with need for increase in vent settings to maintain his oxygenation. Shortly after report, his poor oxygenation status continued into the AM shift. Worried, a call was placed to the rapid response team. Respiratory therapy was unable to bag mask the patient. The medical team placed a small bronchoscope through the trach to find signs of severe internal bleeding and an extremely large hard blood clot. The surgical team was stat page to the bedside. Upon arrival, the patient became unstable and arrested with pulseless electrical activity. Code blue and life-saving measures of CPR were initiated. ROSC was achieved with two sequential episodes of PEA, followed by CPR and ROSC. During the code, a stat page was called to Dr. H, one of our CT surgeons, and a bedside thrombectomy was performed using large McGill forceps through the trach site. Even though the patient initially stabilized, Unfortunately, he passed within 24 hours due to complications of pulmonary thrombus formation secondary to hemorrhage post-tracheostomy. 
So this slide is a little shocking for me to look at personally, even though it's been years since this actually happened. The instruments seen here to the left are McGill forceps. The leftmost picture was the first piece of thrombus removed, followed by the more right picture. And as you can see, all of the smaller branches of bronchioles are coming off that main bronchus area are very visible in the rightmost photo. This is the largest blood clot I've ever seen personally in my career and it, the event has left a very lasting impression on me as a nurse. Shortly after the death of patient X, an R, a root cause analysis was performed and included all team members involved, linear timelines of documentation, the email we sent to Dr. C, and the conclusion of the meeting was that miscommunication, especially between the physicians, likely led to the events that occurred, that occurred. And despite being a very complex, critically ill patient with so many comorbidities, it hastened the outcome of his death. So when we talk about the breakdown of miscommunication, areas, that, areas of occurrence was between the overall plan, pr the procedure performed prior to blood products, the redundancy of unsuccessful interventions, lack of understanding of severity, possibly on the physician's part, and the resident taking his frustrations out on the nurse. Variables that influenced the situation was the prolonged ventilation by ET tube, miscommunication between physician teams, missed administration of blood products, a rushed procedure, poor communication between the resident and attending, and the need for emergent thrombectomy. What were the themes of the conversations? Negative themes involving fe feelings of fear, frustration, anxiety, and anger occurred between the nurses. This changed the culture in our work setting by creating exclusion due to shifts in power. It also created lack of stability, made staff feel undervalued, and caused high anxiety in a competitive environment. On a positive note, though, the nurses did discuss feelings of support from management and the chain of command which increased a sense of team and feelings of value. Organization as a conversation is a useful way to reframe our thinking about what happens in our day-to-day -day interactions in the places where we work and learn. A root cause analysis is a great method and tool to evaluate errors and serious adverse events with the goal of identifying problems of cause and prevention of mistakes. This type of communication is supposed to be blame-free to the individuals with aim at syst systematic errors. The RCA performed allowed the team to discuss interactions and, and the breakdown of communication through words and mapping of timeline events. Organizations are formed through two ways, patterns of meaning and patterns of relating. Patterns of meaning are formed through themes such as the organizational mission and vision statement. And the relating side is formed through team member interaction, through rituals, processes, and protocols. It's how the job is performed. As discussed earlier, the goal of taking care of, of the patient was difficult to accomplish as patterns of meaning and relating were not put into practice. Patterns of relating <clears throat> are, as an ICU nurse in this facility, um, we're expected to involve ourselves in the participation in the participation of team rounding carrying out the seven promises discussed earlier of the organization participation in the clinical ladder implementation of evidence-based practice and good communication through talking and listening existing themes of the organization as previously discussed are through the mission vision and values the meaning of these three shapes the organization and because they were not practiced in this event the mission and vision were failed Quality of care and human interaction were compromised, causing the breakdown in care. So how can we improve the organization by utilizing positive ways of talking, listening, and being? When talking to others, speech should be thought out and performed with intention. Skill and language can reinforce the team value and can be used for innovation, motivation, and control. Don't forget it includes the nonverbal cues. Good listening involves being present and paying attention to the person talking without distractions. And a state of being is centered around being mindful and aware and in tune with what's happening. Sparking innovation is vital in the healthcare field and can be achieved by using the method of both and thinking. 
Both acknowledge multiple useful and viable perspectives, and and involves preconceived ideas of novelty and innovation. Healthcare is an ever-changing mess of an environment. It requires ideals of fluidity and flexibility by all facets of workers. Rather than being stressed by the complexity of the organization, try saying yes to the mess. This allows for peace and simplification of the chaos and creates space for innovation and problem-solving behaviors. If we rewrote the story using patterns of relating, this would involve active participation during rounding with the medical team and family, practicing those seven organizational steps, implementing evidence base, and using good communication through talking, listening, and being. Rewriting the story using, using patterns of meaning would involve treating the patient how you would want to be treated, implementation of the mission, vision, and values, improving, which thus would improve the quality of life, acting as leaders, being intentional, and using knowledge by way of gesture, meaning, and response. Strength-based leadership involves, um, strength-based leadership discusses that leading with language involves building trust, showing compassion, providing stability, creating hope, and leading others with strong words. So in applying the concepts discussed in this presentation, let's imagine how the story could have happened. ICU patient X needs a tracheostomy procedure due to prolonged mechanical ventilation by ET tube. His labs revealed coagulopathy and high risk for DIC. The medical critical care team consulted the surgical critical care team to place a bedside tracheostomy. The teams discussed an appropriate plan and agreed that labs needed improvement before proceeding. A, manual, a, mu a mutually agreed time was scheduled the nursing staff was able to replace blood products and platelets, FFP and fibrinogen before the procedure. After replacement, a courtesy call was placed to the surgical team and the tracheostomy was performed mid-shift. Once performed, I observed severe oozing from the distal trach site and contacted the surgical team post-procedure. The resident and attending Dr. Est returned to the bedside and agreed with significant blood loss. Orders were received for Surgicel to be packed around the site, and if bleeding did not slow or cease, to add Surgifoam and call if bleeding continues or if the patient became unstable within a one to two hour window. The dialysis nurse came and started the procedure and was present around the two hour mark and noted significant bleeding and helped Nurse A clean around the site. After, I repaged the surgical team and, and notified the medical team as a professional courtesy, as the patient was still having significant bleeding despite ordered interventions. Resident and Dr. S. appeared at the bedside again and assisted the nurse replacing Surgicel and Surgifoam and also using combat gauze to aid in cessation of hemorrhage. The nurse inquired about rechecking the patient's CBC and the surgical team agreed that this was a good idea. Nurse B was able to draw the labs to the dialysis port to prevent need for further phlebotomy. The surgical theme team thanked the nurses for diligent work and collaboration. The medical team arrived to assess the patient and discussion with the surgical team about the upsizing of the trach for the possibility of tamponade to a bleeding arterial. The patient's status and plan were discussed with the family who agreed to the procedure for trach upsizing. Patient X was then transported to the OR as larger equipment could be utilized to upsize the trach. In the OR, several bleeding arterials were located and cauterized, followed by trach upsize for a tighter seal, which seemed to be successful. The labs drawn early revealed a decrease in H&H &H from several hours of bleeding. Three units of PRBCs were transfused in the OR, and once recovered, patient X was brought back to the ICU and monitored closely for signs of bleeding. Post-procedure, minimal bleeding occurred for the duration of the, of the shift. Nurse T received bedside report. The patient's H&H &H needed to be rechecked around midnight and to, and to monitor signs of internal bleeding. Patient X remained stable throughout the night with minimal bleeding and was stable upon my return the following day. In conclusion, the vitality of good communication is evident, especially in this unfortunate case of patient X, along with thorough documentation. Because of patient X, I am a better nurse advocate.